Hi, everybody. Welcome to SRH Access Facebook Live. I'm Lexi, and I'm here with our surgeon, Dr. Henry Ellis. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. And we are at our brand new Frisco campus, Scottish Rite for Children Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Center. And today we are talking about surgery, all things surgery. That's why I have this really cool hat on. Dr. Ellis is going to put his on in a little bit, but mine takes a little longer. So Should we get a behind-the-scenes look? Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Well, this is our brand new surgery center that we have here, and if you're a patient, you'd come in and check in, and the first thing you're going to do is walk by this desk and say hi. So these are the doors you'd come through. These are the doors you'd come through. Okay. First thing you do when you come to surgery, and we're going to walk back. Hey, guys. How Hello. are you? Good. Hello. So this is going to be our team out here. For Very exciting. A couple things to know with surgery. A couple really important things. Our primary goal is to make sure everyone is safe and to make sure that we are clean when we do things. So that's our primary goal when we come through here is to make sure that you are ready for surgery and that it is a comfortable and fun and easy experience. So everyone we have here deals with kids all the time and we know how it is because it, it can be scary for kids, but you know what? We know how to make it happen and to make it a good experience for you. So you're gonna come in here. These are you, the pre-op rooms? These are what you call the pre-op rooms. This okay. is where you sit there and you wait and you meet everybody. You okay. meet your anesthesiologist, you will meet your surgeon, you will meet your nurses. You will meet everyone involved in the surgery, get to ask all of your questions, and to be sure that you are absolutely perfectly ready for surgery before you go back. Okay. How long are people typically in this room? You know, anywhere from 20 minutes up to an hour and a half. Really depends on the surgical scheduling at that time. Okay. But, um, you know, there's a TV in the room. Um, there's a lot of information, and there's plenty of opportunity to ask for any questions or any last-minute things. Oftentimes what will happen is your surgeon will go over the surgery with you, your anesthesiologist will go over all the aspects of anesthesia, and then you got to be sure that your surgeon grabs a marker yes, and has to mark the site of the surgery to be sure that everyone in the room, including you, the patient, is agreeing to where the surgery is going to take place. All right? Shall we go Very in the good. OR? Definitely. Let's do it. And so people will check in right at that counter where we were standing where it says surgery. That's where people are going to walk up. Families are going to check in. That's right. That's the first step. That's the first step. Okay. And then when they call your name back to these rooms is when we start getting you prepared okay. for surgery. Now behind these doors, you can see that in any surgery, you usually have a red line. And that red line yes. says that you really need to be sterile before you go back or you need to have, um, you need to have clean scrubs right. that are not coming from the outside. The shoes are the same way, and that's why we wear yes. our operative hats, okay? Very so this is important. to be sure that the hair um, and any kind of what we call foam mites, um, as we are very, very concerned about keeping things sterile and clean. And since you guys are going to join us, we're going to be sure we put a hat on you too. It looks great on you. Looks great. Perfect. All right. And just so everybody knows, there are no surgeries happening here today, so that's why we're getting this behind-the-scenes tour. We're actually opening mid-November for surgeries here. That's right. So, so we will go through one major final cleaning um, of the OR, and that's why you guys get a special yes. sneak peek at the operating rooms before we start. Very cool. You guys are going to be really impressed. As you're a patient, what will happen is, is you'll wheel back here with your operative team, okay, um, including your anesthesiologist and the nurse. And as you roll back here, um, you will go into one of the operating rooms. Okay. okay. We have two operating rooms right back to back right here. Um, here's the first one right there. We call that OR1. We usually designate them with numbers. And we're going to go right in here with OR2. Here we have Tammy. She's one of our OR nurses. Hi, Tammy. Hi, how are you? Thanks for helping us out. Thank you. After you. So <clears throat> Tammy's job while we're in the OR, she's called what's called a circulating nurse. And the circulating nurse helps manage the room and to be sure that everything in the room is very tidy and clean and is sure that the surgical team has everything that they need and that they're ready to go. And they also make sure, and they're probably their primary goal is to be sure the patient is safe and comfortable the entire time. And so Tammy is one of those nurses that will bring the patient back here and she wants to make sure that you're not nervous right. and she will play your favorite song. She will talk she to you. Will she will dance with you. She will dance with you. She will hold your hand. She will do what it takes to make sure make that you come back that. here and you're comfortable. So this is the OR. We got, we got cool. a lot of people in the OR right now. How many people are in the OR typically during a surgery? Routinely, uh, you'll have a surgeon. Okay. Uh, a surgeon can have an assistant. He can either have one or two assistants. You have what we call a scrub tech. And the scrub tech, primary goal, we got one of our scrub techs right there, Willie. Hey. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> uh, actually, I'll, I'll let Willie tell us a little bit about the role as a scrub tech. Yeah. Well, um, 
surgical tech uh, is one that would pass the instruments to the surgeon, assist him in any way he needs assisting during the case. Um, as far as making certain that we pull for the cases, that we scrub in for the cases, we gown and glove the surgeons, we make certain that uh, everything stays sterile throughout the entire case, and then at the close of the case we make certain everything's done and we turn over the room and make sure the surgeon is ready for the next case. Mm -hmm. So we're really watching out for the patient to make certain that everything stays sterile throughout the whole case. Yeah, I'll tell you, w Willie's a little bit like the policeman in the room because as we're operating on the patient, we're paying attention to the, to the patient. The scrub tech is paying attention to the surgery as well, but he's making sure everything in the room stays sterile the whole time. And so his role is to be just a step back from what we're doing with the patient. He takes a look around, he makes sure that, no, that no one, no, nothing is creating any problems with sterility in the room as well. And he's also kind of that first assistant to the, uh, to the surgeon in passing the instruments. Um, and they also are aware of what's going on in the surgery as well as what's going on in the OR room. But while we're operating on the patient and while we're trying to you know, fix the broken bone right. or we're trying to fix the meniscus tear, um, you know, oftentimes we're paying attention to the patient and what we're fixing, and that's where we rely on people like Dr. Kelly. Dr. Kelly makes sure, ensures that the patient is asleep the whole time right. and doesn't feel anything and doesn't remember anything. Remember, totally comfortable the whole time, asleep during the whole surgery. Uh, we use a lot of fancy computerized equipment and stay with you constantly the whole time you're back in surgery. Um, I like to joke, it's like a grandmother. I'm here to make everything really wonderful. You're like the fairy godmother. Yes, yes, sure I love Making sure everybody is yeah. doing well. Sound asleep, safe, don't feel any surgery, right. wake up happy. I know a lot of people ask, will I wake up during surgery? That's a big concern yes. for a lot of kids. Yes, you will. Okay. Every time. Now the one thing that you'll notice about this operating room or what you, you may or may not notice operating room is this is this state of the art equipment. This is the newest, uh, this is the freshest, um, it is the most advanced stuff that we have um, and primarily majority of what we have in this room is for arthroscopy. Now arthroscopy is when you put a small camera mm -hmm. in a joint and you can imagine in small kids you got to be sure you got the right stuff and right. you got the right infrastructure here to do surgery on the small kids. And so what you can see is we've got a lot of cameras to be sure from almost any angle we can see the camera that's inside the joint. Okay. And oftentimes we have big monitors on the sides in which we can also have information about the patient up while we're doing the surgery. So it's sometimes very helpful to have an MRI up or maybe images of a previous surgery up on these on the bigger screens on the side okay. so that we can refer to them during the surgery to be sure uh, that, that we confirm what we're seeing. So those can be happening on these big monitors too? That's right. Okay, so not yep. just only live what's happening, but things that can help. Absolutely. You know, what you notice, it's not often that you have windows in, in an OR. Right. And, but we do think that it is important that, you know, some people in some scenarios may need some observers. A lot of kids can have uh, some athletic trainers or maybe some other healthcare professionals that may want to observe in the OR. And we really want to keep the OR clean and minimize how many people are in the OR because it, it keeps it a more a cleaner, more sterile environment. Right. So we have an opportunity for observers to be able to observe it. And we really want to reserve that for the right observer to come in uh, to see a surgery. But that gives us an opportunity because one of our primary missions, other than taking great care of the kids, is to educate right. others. And so sometimes it is important to give that opportunity without compromising the care of the patient. So these observation rooms are going to be really valuable for us in the OR as well uh, to show others. That's great. So that's a little bit of a, a, of a little bit of a snapshot of the OR. You can see we got a lot of really um, you know brand new tables, right. brand new computers. Just opened earlier this month, so we are brand new. Like we talked about, it's just state of the art, great stuff. But we're here for a behind the scenes tour. Yes. Okay. So. When we're in surgery, what happens when I say, boy, I need this instrument? What does happen? This I is a great part. I think he's going to show us. The great thing about, the great thing about a behind-the-scenes tour is you get the behind-the-scenes tour. Yes. Right, right back here is where we keep our equipment. And I'll tell you, not only is it equipment, but we got warm blankets for when you wake up and you're a little bit oh, cold okay. as we got a warmer. Sometimes we use heated, you know, warm fluids as well, and sometimes that can help a patient. Right. And you can see... Uh, it's not five steps away in which we've got a majority of our equipment. Now you can see we're still stocking because we're not quite open yet. Right. So we've got some empty shelves that will be filled uh, within the next couple weeks. But you can see no matter what equipment we need, um, whether it's a, it's a screw to put in or an anchor that we use to, to suture up some of the uh, ligaments, uh, we got it all right here. And really it's just a few steps away from the OR. So that really doesn't 
uh, compromise uh, any loss in efficiency or time during the surgery. And what's also really nice is how clean it is. Yeah. This is called a sterile core, right? Okay. So um, this is, this is, this is um, as clean as we can make it. We, we make sure that it is sterile and people wear hats and proper clothing and you know, proper shoe wear when they're back here so this stuff stays clean through here. And how many operating rooms do we have? Well, we have those two ORs that we just went through today. Okay. Um, and as we continue to grow, we're gonna, we have the opportunity just within this structure to have four additional ORs. Okay. So as you can see, we've got a long wall through here, and that is more additional OR space shelled. Okay. okay. And when we talk about orthopedic surgery, I know some people may not really understand what that means. Can you talk to us about the definition of sort of what orthopedic surgery is? Yeah, well, ortho orthopedic surgery really is surgery that pertains to the musculoskeletal system. Okay. Okay. So that can include your spine. Um, or a majority of your extremities. And so we typically would uh, use that term orthopedic surgery for muscles, tendon, ligaments, bones, cartilage as kind of the tissue structures that we focus a lot of our specialty on. Okay, and where are we headed now? Well, right now, this is um, outside of the sterile core, and we're gonna give you a more behind the scenes tour. Okay. Outside as we walk the down the hallway core. here, this way. I'm completely lost, so I'm glad we have you to tell us where we're going. Well, that's all right. You know, before you, um, before, you, uh, before you go in the OR, you've got to have a locker room. Right. Uh, because you have to have clothes that are not from what we call the outside, right? We don't want street clothes is what we call it. So you've got to have fresh scrubs um, that are cleaned that are within the here. hospital. They're already here. This is where you get your hat. You get your OR boots. As you can see, these okay. are the boots I wear in the operating yeah. room. Um, so he didn't hook me up with those. I've got the regular shoes on, but they do, do have the hat. Um, so we got a locker room and you can see there's two sides of the locker room. You, this one maybe. No. There's a lot. Oh. There we go. This is Dr. There's Ellis' no proof here. door. There, you see the red line again here. So this is distinguishing that you cannot come out of this room unless you have clean OR clothes. So you enter the locker room from the other side, you get your, OR, you get your clean OR uh, attire, and then you can cross that red line. So you can see we've got two red lines here. So you, to be inside that red line, you've got to have the clean clothes. So this is one of the pathways if you were in the men's locker room that you could take after you change and get ready to go into surgery? That's right. Okay, That's good right. to know. All right, we're gonna walk down the hallway here. And Dr. Ellis, what is your specialty? What are some of the surgeries you focus on? So my specialty is pediatric uh, sports medicine. Okay. And what that is, is uh, it is kids that have sports injuries that oftentimes require arthroscopic care. And so the ACL injury mm -hmm. that I'm sure you've heard is very common. Yes. Uh, that has, you know, as kids become more competitive in their sports activities and kids are playing more organized sports, we're finding that kids are tearing their ACL not only more commonly but at a younger age. Oh. And so that can really affect some of their growth plates. And so we have a special... Um, you know what, we're gonna go in there since the door's open for us. <laughs> it's a sign. Oh, very cool. So as a behind the scenes tour, we wanna to be sure that you guys understand that after surgery, you have trays of instruments. And those trays of instruments go through a very specific cleaning process to be sure that they are perfectly sterilized. Right. And so that's where you have, uh, this is the area in which we do the sterilization. And you can see here uh, that this is the room in which we have, uh, we have the machines and the infrastructure to be sure that the instruments are clean. And you can see there's really two sides to the room because you have a dirty side and you have a clean side. So instruments will come in, instruments come in will come carts? in on the carts. In the dirty side, they will get aggressively cleaned here before they get put through the machine that sterilizes the equipment. Once they go on the other side, that would then be the sterile area, and then they get wrapped up in a sterile, uh, in a sterile, way, in a sterile manner, so that we can use them for surgery. So the, this area really has a clean and a sterile. Uh, I'm sorry, a dirty and a clean area uh, for the instruments. Now this is very behind the scenes. I don't think I've ever seen something like this before. It is very cool. It is, it is very neat. It's we can't wait to get it going. Yeah. 
And we did have a live question, actually. Thank you guys for participating. If you have any questions about surgery at Scottish Rite for Children, please post them in the comments below, and Dr. Ellis will answer them now, or we'll get to you after the Facebook Live is over. But one of the questions was, how long do surgeries last? Well, surgeries can last a variable amount of time, right. really just depending on the type of surgery. Right. You know, this is what we call an ambulatory surgery center. So the idea is that this would be called what we call a day surgery. So you come and go the same day okay. and you would not require an overnight admission. Okay. Generally, those surgeries are thought to be less than two hours mm -hmm. uh, in healthy kids, um, in which we believe it's safe for them to come and have minor surgeries. Now, that may be something as easy as removing a screw or a minor fracture. Um, it may be something like a bit more complicated, like a knee arthroscopy with an ACL reconstruction um, or a hip arthroscopy. Okay. So there are some procedures that may last closer to two or three hours, but our goal is to be sure that they are taken care of in a safe way and that at the end of the day that they can go home to the recuperation so they don't have to spend the night in the hospital. Right. Our primary goal is to be sure that they're safe and that their pain is managed well before they go home. Understood. Yeah, that answers one of my other questions about will patients be staying the night here? Yep, so uh, as an ambulatory surgery center, our, our goal is that the patients go home at the same day. Um, but if need be, if, if for some reason uh, a child has a little bit of pain, um, if the parents live far away, or if there's some concerns we have, we'll, we'll, we can accommodate them to spend the, night right. the, spend the night at this facility. The intention is that, we, it, the intention is that it is a day surgery. So our goal Absolutely. is that, that the surgeries here would be appropriate to go home the same day. Got it. We'll just peek in here, Amy, and this is uh, another part where we keep our equipment. And you can see it's on the other side oh, so of, the, of where our sterilization occurs, and we'll keep some clean instruments in here, and it's another storage area okay. that we use. And we will walk back uh, over to the OR. You can see those doors have a red sign, because in most hospitals, um, you know, when you see those red signs that, that say you must have proper surgical attire, mm -hmm. um, it's serious because it's, it's the intention is so that it remains clean in the back. Right. And so you got to keep an eye out for signs like the one you have straight ahead to ensure that you don't go past those. And oftentimes you'll see that red line. Mm -hmm. That means you shouldn't cross unless you're with uh, hospital personnel and to be sure that you have the proper hospital attire. And now will the people that go into the observation rooms, will they be scrubbed in as well because they're crossing that line? Yeah, they will. Um, okay. They will. So they will, we will still want them to have scrubs and proper surgical attire. So we, we be sure that anyone anywhere near the OR right. um, still produces a clean. They just won't be in the OR right. per se. So it'll be a little bit different. So uh, we hope that that'll still give a great educational opportunity yeah. for them. Well, let me show you a little bit about the, we walked around the ORs, and I just want to show you guys a little bit about what happens at the end of surgery. Right. Okay? Because sometimes kids have a lot of questions like, well, what will it feel like? Or will I be in pain? Yeah. Or will I wake up in surgery? Right. right? And so that, of course, that, of course, is minimized with all efforts because we have a dedicated pediatric anesthesiologist that really make sure that the kid is taken care of the entire time and that they're relatively comfortable, particularly right. when they wake up. They know what's happening, their questions have been answered, they're that's, ready to go. That's right. So what we do is once you wake up in the operating room, okay, and once you start to kind of wake up from anesthesia, mm -hmm. before you're actually conscious, so you're still a little bit asleep, you go into an area that we call the PACU, okay. the post-anesthesia care unit. Post-anesthesia care unit. And this is a great area because before you wake up and as you start to wake up, we can call your parents back to be with you. So you might not remember this part. That's right. But this will be where you can be reconnected with your parents. That's right. So you'll wheel in right here and oftentimes the first thing you remember after you've been here for about 10 or 15 minutes and you start to wake up out of a daze and you don't even remember, sometimes the first picture you see, picture you see is a picture of your parents right, right, here, right. Right, waiting right here with you. But we've got to be sure that you're out of the OR so your parents can come be, be back here with you as you wake up from anesthesia. 
And so um, we connect you to a few more monitors. We just want to make sure that you wake up and we still, you can see we still got some monitors back there. That just right. make sure you're breathing fine. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes those monitors can tell us if you're in pain. You don't even have to you don't even have to verbally have tell to us you're in pain, it. but we can see it on those monitors. So we know to give you medicine, even if you if you feel like you can't verbally tell us. So uh, that's really the point here: is to make sure you're comfortable, with pain's controlled, you're waking up nicely, and to start kind of coming out of anesthesia with your parents around you. Okay, and we have several of these, so you can have five different patients in this area and separated with curtains. That's right. So we, we got plenty of room for plenty of patients here. Um, you know, as we have, we got two ORs, but oftentimes, you know, a lot of short surgeries, we can have a lot of kids recover at the same yeah. time. Now I'll tell you a little bit about while the patients are recovering, I like the way we built this because as they're recovering right here and I'm trying to come up, you know, sometimes we got to dictate a surgery uh -huh. or we got to put in some pain medicine orders. Well, they built a dictation room right here. Huh. So okay. I'm almost immediately next to the patients if there's any problems here. And I can sit at this computer and I can go over some of the notes from the surgery. I can call in the prescription for pain medication and I can really be sure and I'm really right adjacent from the patient. So it's a, it, I'm in close proximity for while they wake up and I'm just... I'm just right here. Right. So, so it makes you have to it go really back nice. to your office or somewhere far away. To... That's right. It's a little bit of work room for the doctors as you're recovering from anesthesia. It's really well planned so I can continue to be engaged with the whole flow of the surgery during my day. That's great. So once this happens, we really call it in phases. Phase one's when you're really groggy and just now waking up and you really don't know what's going on. And it's kind of like just waking up mm -hmm. right before school. And then you kind of walk to the kitchen table and you're ready for some cereal and you're some orange your juice. Eyes. And you're trying to rub your eyes. Then you come over what we call phase two. And this is kind of an area where we can kind of start to get you up a little bit. Maybe work with physical therapy to be sure you know how to use crutches. Oh. Another thing that you're going to do is we're going to make sure you can eat something. Right. Sometimes you're a little nauseated after surgery. So we want to be sure we get that taken care of before you go home. So maybe so, eat and drink something? So we'll get you a little little something light to drink to be okay. sure your stomach can take it. If not, maybe we, get, we wait a little bit longer to see if you wake up from anesthesia and, and are able to get some of that anesthetic medication out of you. Right. Um, but this is where we'll get you, we get you kind of at a different phase from the groggy phase to the right. let's wake up a little bit more. And then this is, this, this is where we will make sure that you are able to go home before you go home. Because okay. you can see... These rooms, five, six, and seven, they're built to stay the night. Right. So, so is this where that would happen? If so that's where this would happen. So you wouldn't even need to move, and we kind of have a, a hospital version of a hospital room. Uh -huh. And we got a, your own bathroom there, and we got a couch for mom and dad to sleep on if we need to. Great. And this is where you can spend the night if it happens, if, if we need to. Great. And so and this is kind of the area we walked in at yep. the beginning. And so, and so we've actually made a pretty full circle. All right. We've gone all the way around, and... Um, so, you know, sometimes in an ambulatory surgery center, we don't, where do the, you know, where do the parents sit? Right. What happens during that one what to two hours? What happens to the one or... to two hours? Well, I'll tell you, not only do we have a waiting room right here, but while you're waiting for surgery, we really don't want the parents to leave campus. Right. Right. Uh, we want to be sure that they're here just so some surgeries can take a little shorter, a little longer. We like to be in constant communication. Right. We also have a lounge. Uh, we also have a lounge. The lights are off right now, but we have a lounge uh, where the parents can uh, have some meals. Uh, they can watch some yes. TV. This is uh, our Ronald they, McDonald family room. Th this is the Ronald McDonald family room. And as you can see, we just make it a little bit more relaxed setting. Yeah. We just want them to be a little bit comfortable while they're waiting for surgery. And you it's can see it, it looks, home away from home. looks a little bit like a home away from home. And if you bring your small siblings um, while an older sibling is having surgery, well, we got some games for them. Games. And we got a little carpeted area for them to just kind of relax uh, while we're going through the surgery. Yeah, fireplace. You guys thought of everything. That's great. And so how are we going to communicate with parents? I know we use kind of the pager system in Dallas. What's the, is that a similar thing up here or how does that work? Yeah, so, um, you know, the pager system uh, works really well. Um, you know, it's so much easy right now. Everyone has a cell phone. That's and right. so we'll have pagers for those who don't have cell phones. But if you have a cell phone, it's just, just as easy to give a short text or to give a short phone call. It makes, it an, easy, it makes it an easy way in which we can communicate with the parents right. um, and, and therefore we can keep in constant communication with them after the surgery uh, in the Ronald McDonald House or somewhere else. Uh, you know, what'll happen is you'll get a phone call and you'll say, 
the surgeon's done with the surgery, he'll be out to speak with you in five or 10 minutes. And sometimes, and then at that point, the surgeon will come out. Sometimes he'll show you pictures of the surgery. He'll tell you what the expectations are after surgery, talk a little bit more about the expectations and the instructions after surgery, and give you plenty of time to answer uh, any questions. And therefore, usually after that discussion is about the time they're ready for you to go see your child. What are you most excited for, for this to open in the whole new OR? There's something in particular that really stands out that you're like, I can't wait. Yeah, uh, you know, we, there, we have been uh, building and planning for this facility and this structure. And the most exciting part about the new facility are working with the people here. I, I believe we have some of the best OR personnel, clinic personnel. I have been so excited to work with people like Willie and Tammy that you met earlier tonight. Uh, the entire OR staff is the best, and I look so forward to working with them once again. Top notch. And a top notch facility. Thank you so much for giving us that behind the scenes tour, and thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you next week. Appreciate it. Thanks.